Hello and welcome tonight. Days after ECOWAS leaders announced a series of options before it to address the military coup in Niger, leader of the junta, Abdurrahmani Kiani, says they are ready to dialogue with ECOWAS. Fieri cleric Tunde Bakari asked President Bola Tinubu to tackle corruption holistically and not make scapegoats out of Nigerians. Top hierarchy of the military says there was never a request to effect change of leadership in the country as its men remain committed to the country's democracy and loyal to the commander-in-chief, President Bola Tinubu. And the death toll from the wildfires that raised the historic town of Lahaina reaches 93, making it the most deadly fire in the United States in a century. Two days after ECOWAS leaders came out with a list of options before it, as far as the military coup in Niger is concerned, the leader of the junta, General Abdurrahman Chiani, has agreed to hold talks with ECOWAS in a matter of days. Prime Minister Ali Mahamani Zin, Lamin Zin, said General Chiani gave the green light after his meeting with Nigerian Islamic scholars led by the national leader of Jamatu Izlatil Bida Wa Ekamatu Sunna, Sheikh Abdullahi Balalao in Niger Republic. Mr. Zina said he was optimistic that talks with ECOWAS will take place in the next few days. According to him, quote, We have agreed and the leader of our country has given the green light for dialogue. They will now go back and inform the Nigerian president what they have heard from us. We hope in the coming days, they, that's ECOWAS, will come here to meet us to discuss how the sanctions imposed against us will be lifted. Meanwhile, the decision by the Nigerian junta to negotiate with ECOWAS has been described as a good development in solving the impasse in that country. A freelance journalist, Alu Sani, told Channel's television that the intervention by the religious leaders might have paved the way for the agreement. He was speaking on our foreign affairs program, Diplomatic Channel. The Islam has in part one uh, uh, an Islamic scholar speak in Niger, and most of the time, even the people listen to him because uh, we consider the religious leader as the, uh, the decision maker or the stakeholders, the main actors that play a key role in the society. And he decided to listen them, to them in collaboration the, uh, uh, with the contribution of the Niger uh, chief imam. Now they discuss and to see now how to seek a new solution about what is going and uh, how also even to, to, to proceed. That's why the new military junta chairman, leaders, I mean, uh, chairman, uh, Abdurrahman, Chani Abdurrahman decided to listen to them and to go on table. I think it is the best solution for him, even to the, uh, the country, even the, uh, still now the, 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 the general demonstration of going, who decided no, no discussion, no negotiation, no going back. To national issues now, the serving overseer and senior pastor of the Citadel Global Community Church, Pastor Tunde Bakari, has taken a swipe at the leadership style of President Bola Tinubu, questioning his manner of handling the effect of fuel subsidy removal on Nigerians, among other issues. Speaking during the State of the Nation broadcast at the church auditorium in Lagos, the clergyman urged the president to channel his energy towards fighting corrupt individuals and institutions, and not Nigerians. Pastor Tunde Bakare is arguably one of the most outspoken Christian clerics when it comes to social, political, and economic issues. His address on the state of the nation is premised on his belief that governance under the new administration is not going in the right direction. First, Pastor Bakare laments the effects of the removal of fuel subsidy on Nigerians. Mr. President, even though you have announced some palliatives, let me remind you that palliatives cannot address the root cause of the problem. Therefore, we demand that you address the root cause of the problem. Take the yoke off the neck of the poor, go after the looters, recover the loot, and retool it to the benefit of Nigerians. In simple terms, Mr. President, kill corruption, non-Nigerians. In the aftermath of the recent coup d'etat in Niger, 
The clergyman faults President Tinubu for leading the proposed plan of military intervention by ECOWAS, describing it as an evidence of the president's impulsive leadership style. By placing military invasion on the table from the very start before subsequently exploring diplomatic options with the coup plotters in the Republic of Niger, President Tinubu once again put the car before the horse, thus placing Nigeria and the subregion in a precarious situation. While we condemn the spate of coup d'etats in West Africa, we recognize that the situation calls for deep introspection on the part of African leaders and makes even more urgent the case for good governance. The call upon Nigeria at this time is not to so much to compel submission in the subregion through the force of might, but to command alignment through exemplary governance. The televangelist also questions the manner in which certain cases of alleged corruption are handled, citing the probe of former CBN governor Godwin Emifile and the suspended chairman of the EFCC, Mr. Abdurashid Bawa. Considering the reporter claims by the DSS that his actions were in line with an order from above, the handling of the Mephiele case has sent a signal to the world that the current president's disposition to the war against corruption is primarily motivated by a clampdown on perceived political adversaries while various other enemies of Nigeria remain untouched. The same can be said of the detention of the suspended chairman of the EFCC, Mr. Abdurashid Bawa. Today, Bawa is being held in detention by the DSS, while Belo Matawale, a former governor that Bawa had been investigating, has been nominated by the president as a minister. Once again, if Bawa is indicted in any criminal investigation, then the lawful thing to do is to prosecute him to continue to hold him in detention in these circumstances raises significant concerns about the readiness of the Tinumbu administration to fight corruption. Pastor Tunde Bakare draws the attention of the president to other areas of concern, including the need to intensify the war against corruption in the oil and gas sector, reducing the size of government and the cost of governance. Meanwhile, the ruling All Progressives Congress has been reacting to the comments made by Pastor Tunde Bakari over palliatives and asking the president to battle corruption amongst the political class. Now, the National Secretary of the Party, Senator Ajibola Bashir, explains that the present administration is confronting the current economic challenges in diverse ways and Nigerians will soon reap the dividends. Senator Bashir was a guest on our program, Sunday Politics. I don't see him as a politician, and with respect to him, I don't see him as even competent to say what he has said. The fact that we are talking of palliative does not mean that we are not confronting the end long of, I mean, correcting the dysfunction and the, and, and the imbalances in the economy. So we are both, I mean, at addressing the issue of palliative as a immediate I mean, step and addressing the fundamental problem that is affecting access to necessary resources to carry out infrastructure to governance our economy and to turn our economic ground in a way that will have economic prosperity for the Nigerian people. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are not limiting uh, our project to issue of uh, a palliative. We have a four-year uh, uh, four mandate. And so, by the grace of God, even before the next one year, people will start seeing the benefit of the fundamental adjustment that is being made in the economy of our country. On the coup in Niger, some residents of Katsina State under the auspices of the Katsina Daura Unity and Progress Forum are asking the federal government not to support any form of aggression towards the Republic of Niger and its people. The acting president of the forum, Tukur Malami, at a press conference held in the state capital, maintains that supporting any aggression towards the Republic of Niger and its people amounts to self-inflicted injury by the federal government on its people, especially those living in the northern states. In the aftermath of the coup d'etat in Nigeria's neighboring Niger Republic, various groups from across Nigeria and other West African countries have started reviewing the efforts and responses of ECOWAS under the leadership of President Bola Tinubu. In Katsina State, Northwest Nigeria, the Katsina Daura Unity and Progress Forum believes that ECOWAS sanctions on Niger Republic will have negative effects on Nigeria. 
After accepting consultations with a cross section of the people of Kasuna State, the forum has resolved to declare its opposition and rejection of the unfortunate ECOWAS resolution for military intervention against the military junta in the Republic of Niger. We wish to unequivocally reject any intention, resolution, or declaration by anybody, country, or organization under whichever guise to militarily invade the Republic of Niger in order to restore democracy, because it is purely thought of, ill-conceived, and deliberately designed to cause more harm than good. Meanwhile, holding a peaceful protest in the state capital, a coalition of pro-democracy activists are demanding the immediate and unconditional release of President Bazoum of Niger Republic, applauding ECOWAS for its firm stance in support of democracy and the need to restore constitutional order in Niger Republic. We condemn and denounce unjustifiable coup d'etat in Niger and indeed anywhere else. Furthermore, we strongly condemn the arrogance and disrespect to all leaders and respected individuals, such as the President of the Republic of Chad, Mohammed Idris Daibi, former Nigerian Head of State, General Abdul Salam Abu Bakr, and the Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr, displayed by the Kupist. We also demand immediate and unconditional release of President Bazoum. There have been mixed reactions to the responses of ECOWAS to the coup d'etat in Niger Republic. While this group protesting peacefully with placards of varied inscriptions, other groups are also speaking their minds in various forms. In the meantime, the Defence Headquarters has denied reports that the country's armed forces received requests to effect change of leadership in the country. A statement by the Director of Defence Information, Brigadier General Chukur Guzo, says at no time did the armed forces receive such requests from anyone or group. The statement further says that the reports must have been from those who do not wish the country well and are not happy with the progress and well-being of our dear country. The top hierarchy of the armed forces therefore reiterates its commitments to the country's democracy and loyalty to the President and Commander-in-Chief of the armed forces, President Bola Tinubu. While urging those peddling such falsehood to desist from such or face the law, the statement adds that the military is always willing and ready to defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Director General of the National Orientation Agency, NOA, Dr. Garba Abari, is urging everyone in leadership positions in the country to lead by example. Dr. Abari believes that Nigeria can indeed be the most desirable country in the world with her citizens loving her and obeying all laws of the land if the leadership can set the pace. According to him, Nigerian citizens are law-abiding and they manifest this trait everywhere they go all over the world. You go to anywhere outside Nigeria, you see Nigerians actually observing the rules of the countries in which they go to, to which they go to. Why don't they obey their own rules? I would want to, be, to stop by, by the traffic light, mm -hmm. but as I am observing the traffic light, Perhaps a top government functionary will just come with siren and they beat the traffic. And I'm expected to observe the law. So there are two laws for the country. The laws of those who have power and the laws of those who are powerless. So there is therefore that therefore, first and foremost, beyond what NOA could do, you know, the, the, the need, an overriding need for that, for leadership to get up to speed, come to Nigerians clean, discharge the responsibilities, as true public servants, as true public servants, and it becomes easy for everybody to follow. For more on this interview with Dr. Abari, please watch Newsnight at 9 p.m. on Monday, right here, only on Channels Television.
In part two after the break, with the green light from the military junta in Niger to dialogue with ECOWAS, our data analyst Babajide Ogusawu joins us to look at the situation in that country, vis-a-vis -vis the demands by ECOWAS leaders. Do join us again. continues. Fire on with Super Commando Energy Drake. Now available in 50 CL Fed Bottle. Super Commando Energy Drake. Fire on. Every Nigerian says this. As I opened my boss's office, he said I should get in the blue file. It's here somewhere. Bro, the foul was right in front of me. He just moved his finger and said, that would be all. Damn this trophy, my guy. My main guy. Those are my introduction now. Fast forward to today. This guy going to jump back. Go long term. And for IG, I had to see the congratulatory message. Take this cheap button. Take this shower. Well. Honorables! Next round for me! Every Nigerian deserves a trophy, don't we? That's right, you too could be one of the 20 Zenith Bank customers that will win 150,000 Naira every two weeks from June 1st, 2023 until May 31st, 2024 in the Zenith Better Life Promo 3. To qualify, simply open a Zenith Bank account. For more information, visit www.zenithbank.com forward slash better life. Live the better life with Zenith Bank. Where's Glory? Excuse me, ma'am. Hello? Oh, where's Glow now? I don't hear you. <laughs> no, Glow, don't go village. Tie all our customer. Be. Everybody pay attention. See, eh? now Glow be located 10x. Now he might they take attention, my customers. Now he they dash me 10 times the credits when I load. Why even some of me double data join? Eh? Yeah. yeah. Wait, so, so with one fire, we they give all of us, so you they enjoy up to 15,000 naira credit and data. And I say I never finish you. See, now say if you enjoy, if you not join Glow be located 10x, you not go get 1,000 naira welcome credits. You just carry your phone. Dial star 777 Ash. Really? Gulo, you don't win. Oh, now see there yet. Please, I'm looking for Glow. Please say, now Glow be defined. Now Glow be they go. Okay, so Enjoy 10 times the value of your recharge on Glow Barricade 10X. You also get 1,000 naira for calls and data and double data bonus on your subscription. Wanna be a billion? <laughs> Wanna be a billion? Nigeria, Budweiser is stopping by at Port Harcourt, Uyo, Calabar, Enugu, Asaba, and finally Lagos to uncover Niger's next biggest musical talent who will get to perform live on a global stage in Las Vegas. Visit Budweiser.com.ng to submit your demo now. C's and C's apply. Budweiser, yours to take. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18. Drink responsibly. Babes, the gas go. Baby, come. I need more time. Chill. Got to go now. Guys, what's the move? Take the fire, escape to the west wing, and head to the roof. Sass, you've got company. Hope. Sounds good. 
action continues. Fire on with Super Commando Energy Drink. Now available in 50 CL Fed Bottle. Super Commando Energy Drink. Fire on. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you're watching the news at 10, coming to you live from Channels Television, Lagos. A reminder of our main stories. Days after ECOWAS leaders announced a series of options before it to address the military coup in Niger, leader of the junta, Abdirahmani Chiani, says they are ready to dialogue with ECOWAS. Fieri cleric, Pastor Tunde Bakari, asked President Bola to to tackle corruption holistically and not make scapegoats of some Nigerians. Top hierarchy of the military says there was never a request to effect change of leadership in the country as its men remain committed to the country's democracy and loyal to the commander-in-chief, President Bola Tinubu. And the death toll from the wildfires that raised the historic town of Lahaina reaches 93, making it the most deadly fire in the United States in a century. We're in the most state now where Governor Hopu Zodima is accusing opposition politicians in the state of being responsible for the insecurity witnessed in some parts of Imo. Governor Zodima, who made the allegation in Oweri, the state capital, says the manner in which the attacks are carried out clearly show that members of the All Progressives Congress and its supporters are the target of the perpetrators. The governor maintains that insecurity in the state is politically motivated and perpetrated by those opposed to his government. 95% of those who died in the, in the violence and houses that were bombed and those who were attacked are members of ABC or those who are sympathetic to ABC. Is that how to do opposition? Oh. Now what are we talking about? You claim you are protecting the interests of the people. You are chasing a government who can and condemn the idea of government taking people's land? Have I taken anybody's land? No. You are just a government who came and said we must be transparent and obey due process. Have I been accused of taking any money from government? No. So what is your problem? Why are you killing your brothers and sisters? You do not want to come and contest the nation to be a government. You are not saying where government has gone wrong. You are not saying that government did not work. You are not saying that government is not accountable and transparent. All you are saying they want to make you sense again. Because you know you have the remote control. You are responsible for the violence. When you switch off your remote control, violence will stop. Meanwhile, the Chief of Naval Staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, is optimistic that the security challenge in the southeast region will soon be a thing of the past. The naval boss, who was speaking during a courtesy call on Governor Chukuma Saludo of Anambra State, also expressed worry over the level of erosion and flood threatening the facilities of the naval outpost in Ogbaru, Anambra State. The naval outpost in Atani, Ogbaru local government area of Anambra State, comes alive as the chief of naval staff, Vice Admiral Emmanuel Ogala, visits as part of his tour of units and establishments of the Nigerian Navy following his assumption of office. The tour provides him an opportunity to have an on-the-spot assessment of the challenges at the outpost. Here, he sees the extent of erosion and the effects of yearly flooding on the facility. The base itself, despite these challenges, they've been trying, they've made efforts, they've been able to contribute effectively to their policing, duty, the policing duties, which is one of their roles here. And uh, we are happy that uh, uh, the challenges they have did not significantly impact on their effectiveness. But we have taken note of those things to do so that we can improve on the operation, particularly in the area of uh, uh, anti-oil theft, which is one of the critical areas that uh, we want to assess and bring our strategies to improve upon them.
It then proceeds to Oka for a courtesy call on Governor Chukuma Soludo, who receives him and his entourage. <laughs> the naval boss assures the governor that efforts are on to ensure peace and safety in the state and the region, especially the waterways. We all know the daunting challenges that are facing us, particularly in the southeast region, which is the issue of Sitatu, uh, uh, criminal gangs parading themselves as a people who dictate to the people. The activities are very, very, very negative to our patients because we are peace-loving people. We are people who are industrious, who want to go, do our work and then we live in out of our sweats. But these people want to drag us back. Sir, we promise you that as we have been doing before, we are going to do more to make sure that we take the war to these criminals. Professor Chuku Masoludo believes his appointment has really calmed frayed nerves on the issue of marginalization and solicit partnership to tackle oil theft as well as other criminal activities in the state. The, 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 what I call the self-inflicted um, insecurity, which is nothing but plain criminality. Plain criminality. And this is something that we have faced is an existential threat. And I'm very, very pleased that we need to rule this with profile them for what they are, plain criminals, plain criminals. Have nothing to do with any agitation. Part of the highlight of the visit is a presentation of gift to the governor by the chief of naval staff. Though diplomacy is on the table for Niger Republic, the diplomatic approach is rather unclear, which raises the question, is there a solution to the problem or is the solution a problem? Babaji Doguso, founder of Leadership by Data and Channels Television's data consultant, is right here to give us or analyze the latest data and information on the challenges of facing the West African sub-regional bloc ECOWAS. Babaji, great to have you again on the News at 10. Good evening, Ayatunde. So we're looking at the situation as it is now. ECOWAS and Niger seems to be willing to you know, have a, uh, or give diplomacy a try. Uh, but who will have more bargaining power? Uh, is it Niger Republic or ECOWAS? Now, that's a tough one. It's, um, it'll be fluid, very fluid. Um, what you've just asked makes me remember a story my grandfather once told me, and that's in a fight between the, a lion and a fly, the size advantage of the lion disappears. And he told me that the fly is more likely to get into the buttocks of the lion to cause its discomfort than ending up in the belly of the lion. Or, or the saying of Muhammad Ali, the great boxer, you know, exactly. flow like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Exactly. So it's fluid when it comes to who will have more negotiation power at the bargaining table. However, what we should know is that in such a situation, um, your size advantage can quickly become a disadvantage. And so it will be interesting to see how it plays out. But one thing that is clear is that ECOWAS is answering the simple questions and is not answering the tough questions. And I'll give you exactly what I mean. I, today, we both went to school. I remember, for me, I remember one exam I wrote. Um, five questions, the re instruction was clear. Question one, compulsory. Answer, has weighty, carries, weighty marks. carries more with composure and answer any more three. Clearly, I didn't know question one. So what I did was I tried to be smart. I answered four questions without answering the composure question. I failed. What we see is ECOWAS is still not answering its question one, the composure question. Which what is? is the composure question, question 1A? What will happen to President Bazoum if he is reinstalled? In simple terms. Who will protect President Bazoum? Question 1A. Why is this important? Let's not forget. It was the head of the presidential guard, General Tishani, that is holding President Bazoum hostage. So the question, question 1A for ECOWAS, who will protect President Bazoum if he's reinstalled? Is it the country's military? Will it be ECOWAS? Or will it be the European Union or America? Who will protect President Bazoum? Question 1A. Question 1B for ECOWAS is, if General Tishani hands over back to President Bazoum, question 1B is, who will protect General Tishani? Hmm. Will so, it, 
Again, big question. Who will protect General Tishani? Will he be ousted and reintroduced? President Bazoum, will he be given some liberty or freedom? Will he go to court? Question 1C. Equas has talked about willing to negotiate. Niger is willing to negotiate. But what we still haven't heard is what is Equas not willing to negotiate? Because that allows us to clearly know what is the way forward. It is not what Equas is willing to negotiate. It is what Equas is not willing to negotiate. That will allow us to know where the future is. Mm. So which brings you to the next question uh, as a last uh, resort. Uh, what are the likely ways ECOWAS can apply pressure in case you know, the, the, the standby force you know, is asked uh, to you know, be on standby, as it were? ECOWAS is already applying pressure. So what we've seen since July 18 is Nigeria's chief of defense staff, um, General Christopher Musa, is taking leadership, has now become the chief of chiefs of all the other chief of defense staff within the ECOWAS region. The feedback we see from the other chiefs of defense staff to General Christopher Musa is that they see his leadership um, capacity, they see his experience based on his profile. And within this last 30 days, Nigeria's chief of defense staff has shown a lot of consistency in his approach and his remarks to the solutions in the regional blocks decision-making bodies. But what makes this even interesting is in recent times, and if we take a look at some of the actions the chief of Nigeria's chief of army staff has done this week, We've seen some preparations going on in Nigeria's north um, west region. He's come out clear to take his position, as we've seen, regarding ECOWAS. But what we've seen is we have a few options with how we would move. Do we move from Katsina? We've seen that if we take that option to Niami, 12 hours, even shorter than if you're coming from, if you're going to, to Lagos. Another option is if we choose not to go through that route, we could, if you don't, if you don't go through the Kano route, we could go through the Katsina route. We see Katsina to Niami, 10 hours, still shorter than Katsina to, to Lagos, which will take you 14 hours. But the most likely scenario, if we choose and if diplomacy fails, will be from Sokoto. Sokoto to Niami, six hours compared to Sokoto to Lagos, 13 hours. So yes, if all options fail, um, and in the unlikely situation that we choose to be forceful, then most of those actions will likely come from Nigeria's northwest region, especially looking at the proximity of, of Sokoto to, to Niami. Now, Baba Jude, of course, we're looking at this. I mean, we're not praying for a war situation, as it were. We've heard people, several people come out to say it's not the best option. Diplomacy, dialogue should be the necessary uh, way to go. Uh, but are the decisions, or should I say indecisions, of ECOWAS have been influenced by you know, non-interest or non-African uh, interest, if I, I might put it that way? Yeah. So, so that, now, there are also trade implications, um, Ayatunde. Um, there are lots of trade implications to this. And I'd like us to take a look at Africa's situation in the world today and one of some of the things that are being discussed behind closed curtains. The first is if we look at the top 10 most terrorized countries in Africa, that is the list. And that is the latest report from the global database of terrorism. Now, if you focus on those top five, top five most terrorized countries in Africa, here's what you notice, Ayotunde. Four out of the five most terrorized countries in Africa are in West Africa. Four out of the top five most terrorized countries in Africa are in West Africa. In simple terms, if this situation is not well managed, terrorism in West Africa will increase. Don't forget, Nigeria is the most populated country in West Africa. We'll definitely leave it at that and hope uh, it doesn't get to that level, like I said. Well, in the final analysis, my advice to the chairman president of ECOWAS is, you know what they say? That it glitters does not mean it's gold. That it is rational does not make it sensible. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it at that. Thank you for your thoughts on the news at 10. Pleasure is all mine.
The socio-economic rights and accountability project SERAP has sued the leadership of the National Assembly over what it describes as an unlawful plan to spend 40 billion R on exotic and bulletproof cars for members and principal officers and 70 billion R as palliatives for new members. SERAP says this comes after a statement by the President of the Senate, Gosri Lapabio, that senators were sent holiday allowances while some 137 million Nigerians face extreme poverty. In the suit filed at the Federal High Court in Lagos, Sarap is seeking an order of mandamus to direct and compel Senator Akpabio and Representative Speaker Tajuddin Abbas to review and reduce the planned spendings on lawmakers' cars. The rights group also, amongst other things, is seeking an order restraining the National Assembly leadership from demanding or receiving the 40 billion naira to buy vehicles for the lawmakers. After successfully performing minimal invasive coronary artery bypass in Nigeria, the management of tri-state health care is seeking to do more by allowing more Nigerians to have access to quality health care comparable to what is obtainable in developed countries. The lead cardiologist at the hospital, Professor Kamar Adelike, says the hospital will continue to be innovative in delivering affordable medical care with high success rates, especially in the area of cardiovascular surgery. Tri-State Healthcare System is blazing the trail and pushing the envelope in the area of cardiovascular surgery. Located in Lake area of Lagos, the hospital is a world-class super specialty healthcare provider. Interventional cardiologist and professor of medicine, Kamar Delike, is leading surgeons here with a minimal invasive technique, which involves making small incisions in the chest of the patient, allowing the doctors to reach the arts. Minimum invasive, as everybody knows, minimum. <laughs> Instead of doing this big one from here to there, you just make it little tiny, and you got to really see this first lady that we did. So now that surgery is done. We can now do is called pinhole, reduces number one, the duration, two, you know, the cost, three, the risk, and then four you know, this length of stay in the hospital. The larger that we did, 81 years old, we only gave two units of blood. In fact, all of them that we did so far, another one is ongoing right now, two units of blood, instead of almost about 30 units of blood that we are using. Representatives of Tri-State say quality control is at the heart of their day-to-day -day medical services. By making sure that you have the right checklists, the right business processes, the policies and procedures, standard operating procedures, making sure that even as a cleaner or your security guard from the time of entrance, your quality is maintained from the first impact that you have with Tri-State Healthcare. The hospital is expanding its scope of operation and in partnership with Sterling Bank, a medical school, is in the offing. This, according to them, is to curb the problems of brain drain and capital flight in the medical field. What is most important is the Japa thing. So we, on Monday, our medical director is coming back. Everybody is coming back. Prof has come back in 2014. And yes, sir, um, we also expect you to be back. And from when will you be starting with us? <laughs> so yes, people are japping right back and um, making Nigeria number one in healthcare in West Africa and in Africa. And Tri-State is um, the pioneer and the leading cardiovascular um, unit. And um, we are led by our esteemed Professor Adeleke, who also japped back. So yes, we are committed to Nigeria. Time is going to come, I won't be able to run around the way I'm running around. And it, this is, that time was passed, that we have to change. So we are looking at actually starting our own medical school, and they will be able to stay in this country because they'll be able to make money during residency. So Styling Bank is already looking at a way to raise $100 million. Equipped with internationally trained personnel and cutting-edge cardiology equipment, Tri-State Healthcare says it can handle as much as 70% of heart surgeries in the country. Staying with the health sector, since the year 1989, when in vitro fertilization was introduced into Nigeria, about 15,000 babies have been born through that reproductive option. Given the number turned out, which analysts say is relatively low, 
Experts have emphasized the need for society to destigmatize infertility and the IVF procreation option. In this report, our correspondent Bukola Koka reports that medical practitioners advocate IVF as an alternative that has the potential to bring hope to families. This year's World IVF Day, celebrated on July the 26th, was themed Parenthood, a journey of hopes and tubes, capturing in one phrase the mental and physical struggles of women who often resort to the IVF option after what is mostly a harsh reality of infertility diagnosis. In vitro fertilization, IVF, is an artificial form of fertilization done in a medical procedure where an egg is fertilized by sperm in a test tube or elsewhere outside the body. Though it was a no-holds-barred session, these women have requested that their privacy be protected. A group of Lagos-based medical practitioners have put together this program to help intending mothers cope better with the waiting time and make informed decisions where they are considering IVF as an alternative to natural conception. Anxiety to even go to the doctor to start the journey. Gynecologist and personal physician Mr. Babatunde Ogunkunle speaks on the leading causes of infertility, saying the IVF option has brought hope to many families. People going through challenges of infertility will require IVF, especially women with a blocked tube, men with low sperm count. There are some other conditions like endometriosis that may require IVF. And IVF has actually even grown beyond solving infertility. We also use IVF to mitigate some um, genetic challenges in which you, with IVF, the propagation of such condition can be stemmed and to stop the propagation of those genetic conditions. And for the convener of this conversation on the infertility challenge and IVF, the dialogue has been necessitated by the concern that women are waiting too long before they take responsibility for their reproductive health. Generally, people, women are not taking their health seriously, you know, and they are waiting too long before they go and seek help. So we felt that this year, let's do it differently. Let's get people share their experience. Let's talk about the journey of fertility and also to let people know that it is a journey of both hopes and of science. These older women who have traveled the hard and agonizing route to becoming mothers have a word of advice for single women and younger intending mothers. Well, I think the best thing is to try and visit the hospital, visit the doctors, gynecologists, so they can direct you on what to do. Um, I have some young ladies who are still single, and you know in this country, people think they shouldn't have kids because they are not married. So I always say to them, go and have your eggs. Frozen. I don't feel less of a mother. I love them equally. Like I don't think there's any difference between the children that I carried myself or the children that I used the surrogates to carry. I mean, I say to people, if you have a kidney problem and you need a kidney transplant, you're going to do a kidney transplant. And that's, I think, the way it is with surrogacy as well. Pastor Itwa Igodalo of the Trinity Faith Church condemns some of the discriminatory religious beliefs and attitudes that fuel stigmatization and the lack of confidence of women who face the infertility challenge. IVF is a science with which God did insemination naturally. Now we do it artificially. God gave the knowledge, God gave the wisdom, God gave the science. There's nothing of biblical unscriptural or irrational about applying science to aid people. There's no shame, that's the first thing they should know, in being infertile. And there are many, many reasons why people are infertile. For example, God can even make you infertile. Uh, Sarah was made infertile for a season by God. So also was Elizabeth. So anybody who says that it's unscriptural, or not proper and all that, they're just acting in fearful ignorance.
No doubt, the perception is strong that the woman's strength to brave the odds in her journey to motherhood is innate. However, the same difficult journey to ending society's discriminatory attitude against infertility must start now and embraced by all so it can be demystified. Bukola Koka for Channels Television News. In a bold and strategic move that promises to tantalize taste buds and elevate cocktail experiences, renowned beverage company Grand Oak Limited has unveiled its latest creation, Correct Bitters, alcoholic drink, into the market in grand style. Speaking of what distinguishes Correct Bitters from every other bitters in the market, the director of mainstream business, Olofi Olubusi, says Correct is made from the best of roots and is a product that fits into your lifestyle. According to him, Correct Bitters is inspired by classic bitters formulas and adds a contemporary spin by blending an array of unique components that are locally sourced, utilizing uncommon spices, aromatic herbs, and distinctive extracts. A small group of journalists have been called into this room for something new that is set to hit the Nigerian market and beyond. There is a new entrant into the Beatles market that is set to upskill that space. But just before you quip, let's hear what this is about and what makes it unique. Looking at the Beatles space again to disrupt the market, we are saying that our, our liquid is very refined and perfectly crafted for your enjoyment. The formula for that bitters is a secret sauce that nobody has. And I can tell you that the taste is very unique. I mean, it's different from the pack. It's not bitter, bitter. You know, I mean, when you hear the bitter conversation, you think that, oh, if I take it, it's going to make me squeeze my face. And I dare any of you who will take it and squeeze your face in this place. The brand reps here say they are interested in your lifestyle, your well-being as a consumer, and so have created a formulation that you can enjoy. And the idea is while you are indulging, you are getting better, performing better, and being inspired. Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see for the first time the colors of correct Correct beaters is about brevity, lifestyle, it's about energy, aphrodisiac, all embodied in one. And popular Nollywood celebrity Nina Lowo Omobalanle is the brand ambassador to represent Correct Beaters. The first thing that caught my attention was the name itself, Correct. And um, you have to have some balls to use the name Correct in this world that we're in. So I can imagine how much confidence and work has been put into what we have or what we're seeing here today. Our coming in is to basically disrupt the market uh, and take the growth, I mean, lead the growth within the market. I can tell you within a couple of years, in one year time, when we come together, you will see what Correct is doing in this market. Uh, Correct has come to change the face of Vitas. That bottle is very unique. It's going to break into a category and beyond. So it's not just for the Vitas market. It's for enjoyment. I mean, I know some Vitas play in the enjoyment uh, space, but the Vitas are playing the enjoyment space don't play in the functionality space. The beaters are playing in the functionality space. Don't play, I mean, in the enjoyment space. The, the, this beaters is that one answer to all the questions. According to management, correct beaters is made from the best of roots, fits into your lifestyle, slick in bottle, and second to none. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, the NDLEA, says it has taken down three major illicit drug syndicates in Lagos. Operatives of a special unit of the agency led the operation across the state, leading to the arrest of a baroness and four other kingpins with multi-billionaire worth of cocaine, opioids and loud recovered from their hideouts. A female head of one of the syndicates, Faith Mwakwo, was arrested on Wednesday, August the 9th, at her residence in the Festec area of Lagos. According to the NDLA, a search of her residence and warehouse led to the recovery of over 2 million pills of Tramaking, a brand of Tramadol packed in 39 cartons weighing 1,916 kilograms. In another operation, the agency tracked and arrested a group of transnational syndicates in the Leki Aja area involved in the importation, exportation and distribution of cocaine and Canadian loud. A blue Toyota Highlander SUV loaded with 8.49 kilograms of cocaine and 10.3 kilograms of Canadian loud were recovered from two persons, Rama Precious and Adelakon Uluade. 
The operatives of the special unit also busted a syndicate involved in the importation, distribution and diversion of ephedrine hydrochloride, a precursor chemical used for the production of methamphetamine, following intelligence that members of the cartel were planning to divert 25 kilograms of the substance. Two members of the syndicate, Uday Vincent and Okonkwa Ifang Uzozie, were arrested at a commercial bus terminal in Jibo Yaba, where they were attempting to send the concealed substance to the southeast region. Welcome to Sports News and we head to Stamford Bridge in the English Premier League where Chelsea and Liverpool settled for a share of the spoils after a one or draw in their first Premier League game of the season. Luis Diaz opened the scoring early for the away side before Chelsea debutant Axel de Sassi equalised for the Blues in the 37th minute. Ben Chewell and Mohamed Salah had goals to rule the first half following VAR check could capitalize on their opportunities and prevent a fifth consecutive draw between the Earlier, Brentford and Tottenham Hotspur settled for a 2-2 draw at the GT Stadium. Christian Romero put Spurs ahead in the 13th minute before Brian and Bomo equalized for the Bees in the 26th minute from the penalty spot. Johan Wiesa scored the lead, but it only lasted for nine minutes as Emerson was up for Tottenham. Harry Kane says his desire to end a personal quest for silverware was behind the decision to join German giants Bayern Munich from Tottenham Hotspur. After a record transfer, FC Bayern officially unveiled its new signing today. Kane left Spurs in a deal worth an initial 100 million euros on Saturday after spending his whole career with his boyhood club. Yeah, no, it's been, uh, it's been an incredible experience so far. Uh, Obviously, a lot going on, uh, a lot of new faces, uh, new surroundings. But um, yeah, I mean, the reception that me and my family have got since we've been here, the reception at the game last night was just uh, was just magical, really. So really excited to be here, and uh, yeah, just can't wait to kind of settle down and get to work. Yeah, I think I've always said in my career I've wanted to keep improving, keep pushing myself to you know, my limits and see how far that can take me and um, ultimately I wanted to be playing at the highest level. I wanted to be playing in the Champions League. I wanted to be fighting for titles every year. Roberto Mancini has resigned as head coach of the Italian national team, the Azzurri. Mancini took charge of the team in 2018 after they failed to qualify for the World Cup having previously not missed a World Cup finals since 1958. Following last year's failed World Cup qualifying campaign, Mancini came under intense pressure in the Italian media to resign. Former world champion Anthony Joshua needed seven rounds to stop standing opponent Robert Hellenius of Finland in their heavyweight bout on Saturday. Though in the early stages and the British boxer was even jeered by his London home crowd. However, he finished the fight with a thunderous knockout of Hellenius at the O2 Arena. Victory kept Joshua on course for a bout with fellow former world heavyweight champion Deontay Wilder. In basketball, retired NBA stars Tony Parker, Dirk Nowitzki, Dwayne Wade and Paul Gasol and legendary San Antonio Spurs coach Greg Popovich have been inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame. The class of 2023 paid tribute to global talent with French guard Parker, German forward Nowitzki, Spanish center Gasol, and U.S. guard Wade, all joined by the 74-year-old Popovich, coach of the Spurs since 1996. I'm so excited to uh, be a part of this class. Um, Pow, Tony, D. Wade, uh, I didn't always like you guys. Uh, we, uh, we competed at the highest level, but there was always an uh, appreciation of, of your guys' greatness. So uh, thank you guys. And there's one guy in this class uh, that we have the utmost respect for, and that's Coach Pop. Um, I will, I will never forget you. Uh, you wrote me a handwritten note when we won the championship, and 
what you and, and your organization did uh, at my last game, I'll, I'll forever be grateful. So thank you, my friend. Hawaiians in the town of Lahaina have expressed anger as the death toll from the horrific wildfires near 100, making this officially the deadliest U.S. wildfires in more than 100 years. Officials warn the death toll could still go up further as search teams continue sifting through the ruins. The resort town of 12,000 people has been reduced to ruins, its lively hotels and restaurants already turned to ashes. More than 90 people have died in the wildfires that swept through Hawaii, destroying homes and buildings and leaving thousands of people homeless in its wake. Search teams have been coming through the worst hit town of Lahaina as officials sought to determine how the inferno spread so rapidly through the historic town with little warning. The fires have become the deadliest natural disaster in the state's history surpassing that of a tsunami that killed 61 people on the Big Island in 1960, a year after Hawaii joined the United States. Officials warn the search teams with cadaver dogs could still find more dead from the fire. Maui, one of the islands that makes up Hawaii, was also badly destroyed. The damage caused came into focus on Saturday, as officials warned, the death toll could rise further. We are still very much in um, life-saving, life-sustaining, right? We have a number of people that have been displaced, and we want to make sure that we're getting them the support that they need. We want to find them what their uh, immediate lodging needs are going to be. FEMA says a cost to rebuild the historic island was estimated at $5.5 billion. Governor Josh Green says the government is providing housing and health care and urges residents to seek mental health care to help deal with the tragedy. In the meantime, people have been dropping off donations of clothes and household goods in Honolulu. One local resident described seeing victims seeking shelter as heartbreaking. I was glad to see people island-wide coming together to drop off necessities and provide aid for them. And the main news again. Days after ECOWAS leaders announced a series of options before it to address the military coup in Niger, leader of the junta, Abdirahman Chihiani, says they are ready to dialogue with ECOWAS. He was speaking after his meeting with Nigerian Islamic scholars led by Sheikh Abdullahi Balalao in Niger Republic. Also today, Fury Cleric Pastor Tundibakari asked President Bola Tinubu to tackle corruption holistically and not make scapegoats of sub Nigerians. And the death toll from the wildfires that raised the historic town of Lahaina is now 93, making it the most deadly fire in the United States in a century. That's the news at 10 tonight. Many thanks for watching. I'm Ayo Tunde Balogun. Do have a good night.